guys welcome back to my youtube channel and without further ado let's get straight to the point so this is part eight of the series and today we'll be working on one of the most important aspects of the entire project which is the shell service now before i get into that before i get into my visual studio and start um, showing you how it works i think it's a good idea for us to go back to architecture and understand what we're trying to achieve here all right so um this is a repository and remember the link is on the description and um, so in the last class i talked about how to publish and subscribe values or to topics on the mkc broker using the esp and micropython and it means that for now we are actually done with the node devices which are the esps here right now we have our boots.py we have our main.py that currently comes up whenever the node or the esp is turned up right now this means that we have these parts of our system currently in place the nodes and the mqt broker now the next or the other half of the system includes the shell at the center here and then the various features or services that um, shadi has now what is the purpose of this shell service what is the purpose now the shell service is basically like a command service that receives command and executes command it's as simple as that so if you want to do anything in the shadow network you have to go through the shell let's say you want to turn on the tv you have to send the command to the shell that says turn on tv and then the shell executes that command now because the shell has a direct communication with the mqc broker it means that it can control any of these devices or monitor any of the devices connected to that broker right so the shell receives command and executes command as simple as that now it's like an abstraction layer between other services like the voice service the web dashboard automation service right so all these services basically what they do is just to send command to the shell and then shell executes the command so let's take for instance let's take our voice control service for instance now what the voice control is going to do eventually is that it's going to be able to convert spoken word to strings right and that strings will basically be the command that the shell understands. So if you say something like set my TV, or let's say if you say something like what is the temperature of my room, right? The voice control service takes that spoken word, converts it to a command in form of a string that the shell understands, sends that command to the shell, and in this case, the command is you know, tell me the temperature of my room, right? And then the shell executes that command, it gets that temperature value from the MQC broker, and then you know gives you that result the same thing also happens in the web ui service which is basically like dashboard or in this time, this time around instead of using voice control you just have buttons and things you need to press right so the same thing happens for the command prompt and other services so the shell is just basically the medium in which we run commands that needs to be in form of a string and then this command is what you know leads to things like turning on a tv or getting the temperature of a particular room in the house so the communication between the shell and these services here is going to be grpc which i'm going to explain in the next video but right now i want to keep it simple explain how the shell takes command and executes command it's as simple as that right so let's um get to that now one more thing before i move to my visual studio code is um this repository as everything will be Every, every of the code I've been discussing so far, showing you guys so far is on this repository, right? And then for now, where you want to place your focus is this tutorial directory, right? So inside the tutorial directory, you're going to find all the codes for the previous um, for the previous classes, right? So in today's code, um, we're talking about Shadi Show. So this should be called, this should be actually supposed to be part 8, right? So this is a mistake. I'm going to correct this. But basically, this is where you find today's code. Shall show? We have the shell does buy and um, other things needed. All right, so let's get straight to our Visual Studio code. Now, I already have the complete code written here, so I'm just going to explain it. But I'm not going to do a deep, deep dive into the code because this is just basic Python um, stuff, right? I just want to explain the concepts of the algorithm and how it works and also test it out. Then we can call it a day. So, um, so one important thing about the shell, before the shell can work, before the shell can be able to execute command and control devices and monitor devices, it needs to know 
what devices are available to it or what devices are currently in the network what node are currently in the network you understand so we need to figure out a way to tell the shell that on the network there's a temperature sensor that is connected to the system room node on the network there's a tv on the network there's a camera you understand so the the, the shell can you know, whenever the shell receives a command, it knows, okay, these are devices available for me to control or monitor, and then it can execute the proper commands for those um, devices or for that, for that node. So, in order for me to do that, or in order for us to do that, rather, what I have done is I've created a JSON file, which is basically a file that just, you know, lists out all the nodes in the network and the devices connected to that node. So, currently, um, if you open my Explorer here. Yeah. Um, I actually have I actually have two devices that I've programmed, two ESPs that I've programmed so far. I called one office. In that office, um, there are two devices: the temperature sensor and then the lights. And I also I called the second one sitting room, and there are also two devices here: temperature and lights. But right now, I only have one of this ESP, one of this load powered on. That is the reason why you can see that this temperature is currently changing. That's because the sitting room is currently publishing its temperature value to um to the NQC broker and you can see that this guy is currently switched off right this node is not powered on that's why the value is not changing so you just need to note that so um so now the show needs to know that these two devices is what is available in the network and this is what it can control so i want to do that through a json file i want to create a json file i want to call that json file devices those json as you can see here so if you go to my file explorer here under this, I have a devices.json here. And basically, this devices.json is just a huge dictionary or a huge uh, dictionary that has other dictionaries in it, right? So let's say I want to have, so in my network, I know I have two devices, right? Office and system rooms. So I want to create those two devices right now. So since I have two devices in my network, right? I'm going to create those two devices in this JSON file. So I'm just going to copy. All of this here, and I'm going to repeat it here. Now change this to office. All right. So this JSON file is saying that I have two devices. The first one is sitting room. The second one is office. And I'm going to just minimize this, and then let me just explain what is going on here. So we have a dictionary. The dictionary is giving the key sitting room, which is has to be the same exact name of that node in the network so if you come to the explorer here we have sitting room it has to be the same way it is written then we have the name which is basically the same thing then we have the type now this is where it becomes a little bit um, interesting now in the type the type is just a list right and what this list is saying is that these are the type of devices connected to that particular node and the node is sitting room right so um, the first device is called a switch. The second device is called a sensor. And then we have child. The first device is light and the second device is temperature. Now, the thing, what is happening is this. Now for this child value here, it has to, the name here has to correspond with whatever name is in the explorer or the children of the node, as you can see here, light and temperature, right? So it has to be the same name here. Now for this type, there are five types of devices, five types of devices. So if you go back to the repository here and you go to the home page here, you scroll down, I have defined those types of devices here. So we have devices type here. Now the first type is called a sensor. Now what is a sensor? A sensor is basically a device that's connected to the node that allows you to only read values from it. So you are not changing the value of your temperature, no. Of your temperature sensor you are reading the value so sensor device only supports read read operation right so these are things like temperature sensor smoke sensor um, door sensor whatever kind of device that allows you to just read values from it right is a sensor now we have the switch type of device this is basically a device that you can change the states from either one to zero or zero to one so like your door lock or your light bulb or your or the state of your tv right so this kind of device supports both read and write because you cannot just you're not just you can you can change the state by setting 
it to one or zero but at the same time you can also request for the current states are you currently on or are you currently turned off so that's what the switch type device mean and then you have the dimmer type device now this is basically it's almost the same as a switch but unlike the switch where you're only allowed to send one or zero which is to turn on and off the device the dimmer you can send the value between zero and ten so you, you want to use this for something like a fan so if you want to set like the level of the fan or the speed of the fan this is kind of device this type of device you want to set that device to then you have two other devices that is beyond the scope of this particular video um, we have the camera device and the this time device now as a matter of fact for the this time device um i would get to this later um in other videos but uh, this is basically a node that just you know publish the current time and current dates to the mqc broker and then this camera type is for devices that are actually cameras because i'm going to include cameras in the system eventually right so i can view those camera from the um, shady dashboard from the web ui or perform some other operations with it for now let's focus on sensor switch and dimmer sensor switch and dimmer so um if you go back to the code here that is exactly what i'm just um indicating here so i'm trying to say that the light is a switch and that the temperature is a sensor so this way um, be sure understand the nature of the device that is connected to that particular node not just the name of the device also understands the nature of the device and the kind of command that is expected to be sent to it and that's why this needs to be defined so um, basically this is the same thing here the only difference is that now this is office and this is when we change office also now the truth is that you don't necessarily need to create this JSON file because the way I've actually written this algorithm for the um, shell is that you can actually create, you can actually send a command to the shell to create this JSON file for you. You see that in a bit, but this is actually very important also, right? So this way you don't have to, you know, come back to the shell and start creating that device from the command. So, all right, so let's see how the shell algorithm itself looks like. Now, like I said, I don't want to go in depth into the code here um, because these are just basic Python codes. But what I want to explain is the, the concept. Here. All right, so let's talk about the actual algorithm now. So in the shell program, I have a class called load. And then basically this class is what is used to load the devices here. So for each of these devices listed in this JSON file, I want to create an instance of this class. So this class provides the basic operations you can perform with that um, node now sorry for each of these nodes each of these device so um pardon me i'm actually mistaking the word device with node so a node can contain more than one device that's very important to note so this is here is a single node the office here is a single node also and then devices are the lights and temperature right so this class is used to create an creates an instance of a node all right so as you can see in the class definition you have to pass in the device type the node name and the children of um, that particular node so basically everything inside this dictionary is what we are passing to this node class and then you can see that um, i am specifying the node the node topic right i'm also connecting to the broker using that information so this class provides the basic information on the basic operation you can do with that node. For instance, you can see that um, there's a get log method in the class, which is used to get the last value that's been posted to the log, right? And then you can see there's a talk method here, which is used to send command to that particular node. All right, so um, we have some other things here. I have some other functions here. I have a remove device. This is used to remove a device from this JSON list here. So basically, you can see that I'm just loading the JSON file. And because I have the JSON, so there's a variable here that holds the name of the JSON file. So inside the remove device function, I'm only loading that JSON and then removing that particular device. I still have the add device, which does the base the opposite of um, move device, right? And then um, I have the load device, which basically load the JSON file. And use a JSON file to create the instances of that node. 
so as you can see here in this load device function i am loading all the devices in this json and then i'm immediately creating an instance of this class node here for that particular uh, node all right so now we have the main function that does the actual executing of command and the function is called command me it takes in a command which here yeah, i've called the message and executes that command so let's just see that in action i'm going to explain some other um, bits and pieces of this code so now let's try to let's try the remove of this command so the remove command so there's some basic command right i call them system command if you come to the top of the code here, you can see the system command here. We have the lists, the add, remove, help, and this. Now, I'm currently not using this particular last one, but I'm using the list, add, remove, and help. So, um, so let's try and execute. So, the first thing we want to do is to first load the devices here, right? Load them as into a variable called all devices. Then we can start executing command. So, whenever you execute the function called command, it gives you a response, return a response. And our response is a dictionary that contains two keys, status and response. So the status just tells you things like, oh, the, re the command was executed successfully or tells you either an error executing that command. Right, the response is the actual response to um, that command. So for instance, now if I say remove office, right, let me run this code. Now ensure that you are running the code from your environment where you have the how MQTC installed because um, this connects to the broker obviously so um, um, just to be sure you can just say something like pip install m sorry power dash mqtt and it should be power not paha so it should be power so I already have that installed but if you don't have that installed then um this command is going to install that um library for you so now let's run this code um i'm currently inside that directory so i'm just going to say python shell dot pi and then you can see did you notice that immediately office was removed from this list here that was because i said remove office and then you can see that the status which is the first thing we are printing out says sources and then print the response it says device remove now let's try another command let's try the list command let's run this now the list command lists out the devices that the show currently recognizes right which is basically the devices that is currently in the json file as you can see here it says that there's a sitting room there's a sitting room node and then in that sitting room, we have two types of device, switch and sensor, and the children is light and temperature. Now, what we want to do now is, let's try the add command. To so add, let's add back that office that we just removed. So the way you do that is add, and then you have to, after the add command, you have to also include the information about the device you want to add. So what I want to do is this. I'm just going to copy this dictionary here. And I'm going to create a variable here called this. I'm going to call it office. And then I'm going to equate it to that dictionary, right? And I'm going to change this to office. And uh, yeah, so now one thing you need to note about this command function is that it's only a set string, it's only a set dictionary. So you would need to convert this. Um, dictionary here or this json here to a string and the way you do that in python is simply say office equal to json dot dumps right and then i'm going to dump the original office so now this is going to be converted to the string so now we can say add space plus office so basically it's just saying add and then we are passing this information here right so if you run this command, if everything goes fine, then this JSON should be edited instantly and then the office should be added to it. So let's run this. As you can see here, it was added. 
So that's what I mean about you don't necessarily need to create this JSON file yourself. You can just come here and then use the command me function to add those um, devices. All right, so let's play around with some other functions. So let's say we want to set office lights on. So if you come to the MPC Explorer here, you can see that currently um, the sitting room, actually the light of sitting room is set to zero, which is off, right? Now we can, formally the way we've been doing it is to just come here and, you know, publish that command. But now we're going to do it through this short program. So all we need to do is simply say, set sitting room. light on then we execute this command now there's an error here and the error is coming because i didn't spell the sitting room well so this should be sitting room with a g right so let's run this command again and now you can see it's it's here it said sources and it said since room light set to one let's confirm that from the explorer and you can see that um, for some reason the command here so we see the command as you can see here, light one, but this value was not set to one. So something is wrong, and um, I think what is wrong, let's see, let's see if we can figure out the error. So set its room light on. Um, so I think this problem is actually coming from the ESP. Um, my app will start the ESP, but let's try and set this room light to one and let's see if that works. Okay, so it actually works because I can see that the light just came up now. Um, and you can see that the light has been updated here to one also. So let's set it back to zero. And then let's run this command. Now you can see that the light has gone off and um, in the MPC Explorer here, you can see it has also turned off. So, with just one function, we can do almost anything with almost any device in the network. So let's try out other, now that we've added Office to the list, right? If we try the list command again, we should get Office in the list. So you can see we have sitting room and we also have Office here. All right. So we've tried the list, we've tried the add, we've tried the remove, we've tried the sets. Let's try the get. So let's see, get sitting room temperature. So if we run this, now one thing about this is if we run this code, I'm gonna get a error. And that's because we want to um, run the code, this command will be executed almost immediately without any delay. So what we want to do is because there's an interval in which the temperature of the system room is being sent to the broker, as you can see here, it's not coming in immediately, it's like taking like let's say seconds or two, right? So we want to ensure that the value has been published before we send the command get. So I'm gonna just wait for four seconds here first before running this command. So so this should give us the temperature. Of, as you can see, it says sources and the temperature is currently 25. Now, if you come back to the explorer, you obviously it's not right, it's not right 25, right? But at the moment we made that request, the temperature was um, 25. So, what we can do is uh, we can probably just um, okay, let me see if I can minimize this here and then open this right. So, let's run this guy here again and then let's just watch this is currently 41. It's currently 31. As you can see, this is 31. All right. So um, that is the get, the set, the list, and the other um, commands also. Um, we have the help command. So the help command basically just lists out all the um, possible command, possible system commands. So if I run this, I get. Oh, I see how my delay there, so it's no different. See, I get list and remove help and exist. Let's remove this delay. Now, to make this more interesting, and so we don't have to keep running the program, right? Let's do something. Let's put this in a while true, right? And then 
uh yeah exactly so i have my co-pilots um that is why my code completion is um, almost perfect so what i'm doing here is a uh, message is equal to imputes enter command if message is equal to exist then we break if not we want to say response and then print out the response so um let's my let's just print out let's see json uh yeah print let's print out the response right yes so let's run this command now so now we can continuously keep entering commands so let's try the list so you can see that we got status equal to success and then we get the list of devices as you can see here um, let's try the set sitting room light to one you can see that the lights came up and um, status is equal to success right so let's see let's get sitting get sitting room let's say get sitting room lights this will tell us that the light is currently on as you can see here um response is one which means that the light is currently on so that's exactly how the shell works so the shell is like an abstraction layer that allows us to send command take simple command then go ahead to do the work for us turn on the tv set the tv value get temperature or whatever so this is like abstracting the whole complexity of communicating with the mqc broker and um, like i said the code is available in the repository so if you want to do a deeper dive into how the code works you can check that out um but yeah so i just want to probably show one or two things so if you check the command main function here it simply just have a if from a bunch of if else statements here if the command is list then what i'm doing is just listing out the device right if the command is add and then i'm going to first um you know break the command into chunks like tokenize the command and that way i can get the type the name the child and other things so um yeah so that's basically this you can go through this to have a deeper understanding but that's it so now we have our shell program working fine so in the next uh, video um i'm going to explain how i'm going to include the grpc protocol to our shell so we can communicate to our shell via grpc now the beautiful thing about grpc is that grpc allows you to communicate from any type of programming language what i mean is this your voice control service can actually be written in c plus plus or be written in java whatever is convenient for you right and then we obviously our shell is written in python as you've seen already but with the grpc it doesn't matter if the voice control service is written in python c plus or whatever the communication is still going to work so that's the reason why i choose grpc and decide to abstract it in this kind of way so if for any reason i want to decide to design my web ui service with using html and css right i can this shell service will still work fine as long as i'm using grpc communication to communicate with it so that's the interesting thing about this whole architecture so in the next class i'm going to do a very deep dive into what grpc is and now we're going to implement it into shadi shell and then we're going to create let's see i want to create um i think we will start with the web ui service i don't know um for now but um the most complex part of the system is the voice control service and that's probably not going to do last so at this point we'll just keep developing services that communicate with our shadow shell and then we are good to go and then eventually i'm going to create a different playlist that is going to do which is going to be a deeper dive into the hardware aspect of this now so far we've just been communicating with the esp we are not controlling any actual device in the house yet so there will be uh separate there will be separate videos to show you how to connect the esp to your light bulb your door to your tv right that's going to be a bit more more complex right but of course i'm going to make it look very very easy i'm going to do the hard work for you guys and then just come in and explain the concept and then give you the code and then you can go ahead and execute or apply this thing in your own own so alright guys thank you for watching today's tutorial and um if you've not done this yet please um subscribe 
share these videos it helps me it encourages me and um, of course it just keeps me moving so please share like comments let's get let's let's interact if you have any question let me know in the comment section um feel free i'm going to explain to my best capacity thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video where i explain glpc